us pray. Lord, we ask your spirit, may the Holy Spirit speak to our hearts as we share the word of God together. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray these things. Amen. Amen. Several weeks ago, I spoke to you about the burning coal, the live coal. It was Isaiah whom God touched, and he became the most renowned of all the prophets in the Old Testament. Uzziah, his king, had died. His heart was hurting, so he went to the temple, and while in the temple, he saw a vision. The, a seraphim took a live coal and placed it in his mouth. From this, where did this fire come from, of this live coal? It came from heaven. And so we find this is of the word of God, the power of God, in the heart of a man. Then we find that Seraphim asked, who will go and share this, in essence? And we find that uh, Isaiah says, I will go. I will go. Last week we talked about, in 1 first, in, in first Corinthians 13, about kindness. And we find the scriptures speak of this, uh, the idea of loving kindness. If we go back to the book of Hebrew, Hebrews, Ephesians, excuse me, chapter uh, 2, verse 7, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches in his kindness toward us. Now we take that and we go over to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 6, he, if, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 6. Notice, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Jesus, doing the will of God, okay, but as the servants of Jesus, doing the will of God from the heart. Now, now we're talking about this man, Joshua, and he comes to this profound moment when he says, as for me and my house, Amen. we will serve the Lord. Amen. Now, where did he, how did he get to this point in life? Go back, he's in Egypt, the Passover, he witnesses the Passover. Then he witnesses the crossing of the Red Sea. Then he witnesses no water out of the wilderness and the striking of the rock. Then he witnesses the battle, and he is facing the enemy. And Moses is on the hillside, and Aaron and Ur are with him. And as Moses holds up the staff, Joshua prevails. When he lowers his arms, the enemy prevails. He witnessed the hand of God as Aaron and Ur held him, held him, helped him hold his arms up. He witnessed the crossing of the Jordan when the Jordan was in high water, over a half a mile wide and probably 50 feet deep in its deepest point at that given time. He also witnessed the walls of Jericho coming down. And so now he comes to this moment in his life when he says, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now, if you'll notice very, uh, in the scriptures there, in Joshua chapter 24, verse 1 through verse 3, uh, 13, we find over and over again in verse 3, I looked, I took your father Abraham from the other side, talking about God did this. I gave unto Isaac, Jacob, Esau, God did this. I sent Moses also and Aaron, God did this. I brought your fathers out of Egypt, God did this. I have done in Egypt, God did this. I brought you to the land of the Amorites, God did this. Now, I delivered you, and I delivered your hand in battle, God did this. So he comes this moment in his life, when it is the close of his life, he is at this very, very moment, seeing the, the, his shadow has lengthened and his days are numbered, and he cries out as he challenges the people, as for... Me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now the real enemy that Israel had was not the enemies of the Amorites, but it was idolatry. Idolatry goes all the way back to in the era of Chaldeans when Abraham was there, or Abram as he was known then was there. Uh, archaeologists have dug up huge statues of animals likened to the animals that were on the ark. 
And it seems that they were worshiping these idols. And so God <coughs> drove them out. And all the way through, there's this issue with idolatry. And the very reason that the Romans marched into Jerusalem in 70 A.D. and destroyed the temple was that temple, that temple had become their idol. And so we find this is a chance today. Anything and everything that distracts you from serving the Lord is an idol. We go back and we see here in the very first part as we dealt with these verses in Joshua, the servants, uh, the, uh, the, the servant surrendering. Three points in our sermon. The first point is the servant surrendering. Okay? Not with eye service as men do this. Okay? But as the servants of Christ doing the will of God. Is that where it ends? If it did, let's go back. Not with eye service as men pleasers, but the service of Jesus Christ, but the service of Jesus Christ doing the will of God. If it ended there, all is pain. Oh, good. A total waste. If you are serving God and it ends there, it is of naught. Let's go back. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 6. Not with eye service as pleasing men, but as the service of Jesus Christ doing the will of God from the heart. It has to come from the heart. If it is of the heart, then God will bless. If it's not of the heart, it is of the flesh. What is the what does Psalm Psalms one hundred? Know ye that the Lord, He is God, not we ourselves. We are His people. His people serve Him. You go back to our text two weeks ago. That in the age is to come, He might show the exceeding riches of His grace. In his kindness, serving the Lord with loving kindness, then you proceed in Ephesians and you'll find not with eye service as unto men, okay? but as the servants of Jesus Christ, but as the servants of Jesus Christ doing the will of God from the heart, period, from the heart. Nothing else need be said. Serving the Lord. Root and grounded. It is important that you are root, rooted and grounded in your relationship with the Lord. When the Empire State, when the Empire State, State Building was being built, they did not have the engineers that we have today. So they didn't know how much foundation to build. So they just kept pouring cement and poured cement, and poured cement, until poured cement, so I said, I, I'm sure this is enough. And then it came out of the ground. <clears throat> it's very important that as a, a Christian has a solid foundation. Unfortunately, sometimes, when, uh, and we've all been guilty of this, when we first became a Christian, uh, it was more about on top showing ourselves, or presenting ourselves, or talking about ourselves, than it was about being rooted and grounded. When the old Grace Bridge was built, it was built in the 1920s, and it was built on the same principle. They poured cement, and they took poured cement, until they poured cement, until they poured more cement, and then they said, I think that's enough. It's important that you be rooted and grounded in the Word of God. Now, on occasion, our Lord was teaching some parables, and he fed up to 5,000. Then he told the disciples to go across the Sea of Galilee. That sea is always prevalent to having storms prop up. On the way across the Sea of Galilee, as the Lord was praying, a storm erupts. And we find the Bible said, and the Lord saw them toiling and roaring. The Lord saw them pulling the oars, struggling against the storm, trying to make shoreline. He saw them toiling. Struggling. And then what happened? 
the Lord came walking on the water. Men of this church labored toiling for days, weeks, months. And then God answered prayers. God answers prayers when we are toiling and, and we are pulling and struggling and we are rooted and grounded and committed. It is important in serving the Lord, okay? It, in serving the Lord, it's important to remember, not with eye service as men, mm -hmm. but as the servants of Christ. It doesn't say Jesus Christ. But as the servants of Christ, the Messiah, the resurrected Messiah, the proven Messiah, our Savior, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. Amen. If everybody in every church that's a Bible-believing, preaching church was, was serving the Lord from the heart, no limit to what would be accomplished. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Would to God that all of us and would to God that I could say in all of my time in the ministry, I could truly say, but I cannot truly say, that always it was of the heart. Sometimes we get careless, don't we? Sometimes we get distracted. It's important to remember this challenge. Why did this man, Joseph, Joshua, excuse me, come to this point in reality, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord he had seen over and over and over again the power of God's hand working. It is the power of God's hand, not my hand. It is the power of God's hand, not your hand. Keep in mind that challenge. Not with eye service as into as <coughs> men pleasers. Not with eye service as men pleases, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. It is important we keep that in mind. So then we find, secondly, the servant, Joshua, is submitting. We see in verse 19, 20, 21 of the text, and Joshua said unto the people, he cannot serve the Lord, for he is an holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins if ye forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, and then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you. After that, he hath done you good. And the people said unto Joshua, Nay, but we will serve the Lord. Now, We've been teaching this in Wednesday nights, and I would encourage you to join us on Wednesday nights as we are uh, endeavoring to present a very more beneficial Bible study each week, and I would encourage you to become involved on Wednesday nights if possible. There is a lot to the power of prayer. That is the strength of the church. Amen. I was walking around this church recently one night, very recently one night, praying for this church. That God's Spirit will be upon me, and that God's Spirit will be upon this church family. God will be upon this ministry. That it would be true of all of us, not with eye service, as unto men, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God of the heart. It was in the hours of the night. Shortly after I did this, the person who called had no idea I was where I was. I had the most rewarding phone call of a person in this church who was talking about how much they enjoy the fellowship of the people. Amen. And how, Amen. how there is a sweet spirit. And how God is blessing hearts. And how people are coming to the Lord as their Savior. We had someone this past week trust Christ as their Savior. It should, be every, it should be our desire every day of our lives to somewhere, somehow, 
plant the gospel, either by word or by literature, sharing the word of God, that someone else might become a born-again Christian. I know of a person who witnessed to a person who uh, about the Lord Jesus Christ, and it was the alert, it was the last day of that person's life. It was months later that person became a Christian. You never know when it's going to be your last hour. Not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the service of Christ doing the will of God from the heart. From the heart. You ever heard of a man named Gene Raven? You haven't ever. He was born in San Domingo. Haiti is known today. His mother perished or died at his birth. He was adopted by a French sea captain. You'll now soon know. <coughs> James Audubon. He gave his young boy the name John James Audubon. Now he knows. Well, Audubon, as we refer to him, John out. He was living up near Philadelphia in an area known as uh, for a lot of lakes and so forth. And he was always out in the water, looking at birds. They later moved down to <coughs> New Orleans. Moved down to that area. He was always out in the bayous, out in the swamps. He would take some moss, put it on his head. <clears throat> he would submerge, submerge himself out into the swamp to where only his nose and his eyes would be visible and this moss would be hanging on his head. And he would go up and get just as close as he could to a bird's nest and stand there for hours on end with, as the story tells me, snakes swimming around there. Alligators swim by. Even cottonmouth moccasins swim by. And he just stood purposely motionless. With nothing but his nasal and his eyes out of that swampy, brackish water down in New York, in Louisiana. And he'd come out and he said, I got it. I got it. And he would draw the picture of a bird in this moment of this activity of life in and around the swamp. He went to Scotland and England and published a book, Birds of America. He came back and spent the rest of his life on the Missouri. But he would spend hours on end motionless so as to capture that very special moment in the activities of a bird and its natural life. Let us push to great extent to capture that moment when we can share the gospel, when we can be an example, when we can be a testimony. Amen. Amen. Not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ doing the will of God from the heart. Our Bible says this coming Wednesday night will give you a place where you can list all the things you can do in a given week that you might grow spiritually in the Lord. What are some of the things you should do every day of your life, every week of your life, that you might be a growing, born again, Christian? It's important. Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. For the rest of the days of our lives, let us strive that we might not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ. Do the will of God from the heart. If it's not from the heart, it is, no, it is of no count. It must be of the heart. 
we find that Joshua became a sacrificial servant. In verse 23, he talks about the things he must give up. Now therefore put away, said he, the strange gods which are among you, and incline your hearts unto the Lord God of Israel. Put away, set aside, any and th all things that would in any way be a distraction or a hindrance to your ministry unto our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Set aside that each week you will do something. Hang a door hanger, we have plenty of those. And so on a track. Pray for someone individual that you know in all earnest for their salvation. Reach out and touch people who are hurting. Not with eye service, as in Ephesians, but as the servants of Christ. Notice it's not Jesus, it's Christ. It's all about the Messiah, it's all about the gospel, it's all about knowing that you're going to heaven, and it's all about sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ unto salvation. Yeah, visitor come church Wednesday night. And as I talk with him, I can realize that he uh, made a big effort to be here. And uh, it's Rome, Georgia. He knew a lot of Rome, Georgia, so I knew that he was, a, he was legit. And I had the wonderful privilege of sharing with him the plan of salvation. I've been texting him maybe a couple of days since then. One day he's in Florida, the next day he's up North Carolina, next time he's in Tennessee, he's a truck driver. You never know when or where God can use you. But it's all so important to have a sacrificial heart, putting other people first in your life. Let's go back. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 7. That in the age is to come, he might show the exceeding riches in his kindness toward us. You'll never ever regret being kind to someone, even sometimes they may abuse you. You'll never ever regret being kind to someone, even sometimes they may take advantage of you. You go then to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 6. Not with Okay? I serve as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God with your heart. <coughs> we find Ephesians also tells us this, grace be with you all that love our Lord Jesus in sincerity. Amen. The word sincerity comes from the word without wax. When wax is used to, 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 to seal up the crack so as to hide a flaw and the sun shines on it, the wax melts out. When statues were being bought from Egypt, from Greece being brought to Rome, a lot of them were, had flaws and they would cover them with wax. Finally, they got to where they had to guarantee it didn't and so they would put on their sincerest without wax. When the challenges come and heaviness falls upon your heart, if ever there was a time to be without wax, that's the time. Doing the will of God from your heart. From your heart. You've heard me refer to Matthew 18, 19 quite a few times. Unbeknownst to me, I used this way back in 1988 when God founded Trinity Bible Church. George Mueller used this way back. A lady, husband was an alcoholic, and he was a rather mean and harsh man. He was wealthy, he was of German descent. And he would go to the tavern on every Friday night, and he would drink and boast and conduct himself quite rowdy with his drinking friends. He'd come home on Friday night, being 
abusive verbally. Brother Mueller, and she claimed that verse, if two will join hands and ask of a thing, our Father in heaven will do it. And he said, lest every Friday night you pretend that you're holding my hand, I will pretend I'm holding your hand. I'll get on my knees in my house in, in prayer, and I will pray for your husband. You get on your knees in your home, in your bedroom, and you pray for your husband. And let us claim that verse, if two will join <coughs> hands and ask of a thing, our Father in heaven will do it. Amen. Weeks pass, months pass. One Friday night, her husband was at the tavern, drinking as usual and boasting. To his friends he said, I'm going to show y'all something. When I get home at night, my wife, when I tell her to, she'll get out of bed and she'll cook me a full meal before I go to bed. Matter of fact, I'm going to invite you friends to go home with me. And I'm going to show you what I can make my wife do. Came into the house, his friends with him. He boastfully said, to his wife, woman, fix a meal for all of us. Feed us all a hearty meal. She got up. She began to cook the meal. His friends dropped their heads. And sir, we were ashamed of you. We leave in this house right now. And you can just mark this down. We are not tonight, your friends, and never again, your friends. You're a wicked man. The next day, sobering up, he came to his dear wife, poured his heart out to become a Christian. Amen. You see, it's not eye service. It's not pleasing men. It's being a servant of Christ. Doing the will of God from your heart. From your heart. It is important that you serve the Lord as a servant and serve him from your heart. We have folks in our church who are involved in ministry. We're very thankful for their being involved and making sure that uh, YouTube is out. We thank Donald for that. And we're very thankful for others who are involved in the ministry of this church as musician, Linda, and on and on I could go. Um, we have uh, I have a hard time saying death. And Zika keeps coming up. <laughs> she teaches Lydia's ladies. On Wednesday once a month, every Saturday morning, there are folks who come over here six o'clock in the morning. Uh, Scott, and Michael, and uh, Clay, and others, and they cook up a big hearty breakfast, and then we have a discussion around the table. Word of God, and I can on and on go. We have my very good ministry. Some friends of mine were involved there in BSF, uh, and is involved in that. We appreciate that ministry and any ministry that's getting the Word of God out. I would encourage you to find your niche. The verses we talked about last week proceed with the verses of gifts. A gift is the gift of the Holy Spirit manifesting itself to you through a particular ministry. If it's nothing else but sending out a thank you card to a visitor or to a shut-in, to a person who's ill, uh, taking a door hanger. Uh, we have door hangers. Take about five or ten with you and make a commitment to hang one every, every week. I went to see Bill Smith the other night and I hung one on your neighbor's door. <laughs> so it looked like you did it. <laughs> Anyhow, not with 
eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. And Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As Isaiah the prophet was challenged, who will go? He says, send me. Send me. Lord, send me. That's all you have to ask. He will show you what ministry and time you involve yourself with. It's important, however, that we never forget. Never forget. Not with eye service as pleasing men, but as servants of Christ. Doing the will of God from your heart. Take my heart. It is thine own that him by the pins. It shall be thy royal throne. Take my love, my Lord, our poor. At thy feet its treasures store. Take myself. I will be ever only, ever only, all for thee. Our church has been invited to the funeral of Arthur James Rooney because people in this church were very kind to him. I'm not going to mention the parents by name. But they were very kind to him. He came to our morning <coughs> breakfast. He was a blessing to our hearts. He's with the Lord now. And so, this is the opportunity you have, and this is the opportunity I have for the rest of my life. Not with eye service, as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. I thank you, Lord, for the many people in this church that makes this church happen week after week after week. I thank you, Lord, for those men that toiled for days, weeks, and months. And, Lord, you showed your hand. You walked on water. You performed another miracle. We thank you, Lord, as we see your handiwork. We pray, God, for the outpouring of your spirit. Forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from anything and all things that might be <coughs> not pleasing to you. May your spirit be upon Trinity Bible Church as never before, Amen. pouring out that others will come to know Christ as their Savior. Lives will be touched, hearts changed, the further of your kingdom. We thank you, Lord, for the sweet spirit and the blessed family here at Trinity Bible Church. And Lord, if there are any here that do not know Christ as their Savior, we pray this day will be their day of commitment and trust in Christ. For those of us who know you, Lord, may this day be like no other day, even as Joshua. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Ask our song leader to come forward. It's